service here at First CP Church in Olive Branch. Who else here this morning? I see Miss Betty Puckett's here. Good morning. Lynn Tilson's here. Good morning. Miss Glenda's here. Miss Andrea's here. Miss Jane Vanderbilt is here. Charlotte Dicker here. Jack and Joyce are here. Good morning to all of you. Let's see Beth Julian, Pat Muncy. Good morning to you as well. I hope y'all are doing well. Please go ahead and let me know in the comments that you're here. We'd love to shout you out and tell tell you how much we miss you. Um, also, uh, at any time throughout the worship service, uh, if you have any prayer requests, please go ahead and throw those down there in the comments so that we can see them, so that we can pray for you, so that we can add those to our church prayer list. Um, and of course, we'd love for you to be praying with us every day. Uh, you can visit our live updated prayer list, which is on our newsletter. Uh, just go to our website, firstcpchurch.org, and click on newsletters, and you will find our prayer list. Let's see, who else is here? Scott and Paige are here, good morning. Pat Baker's here, good morning. That was beautiful, wasn't it? So glad that Mama Jan is here to play with us. Let's see, Marilyn Kelly's here, good morning. Miss Cheryl Moody. Molly and Albert are here. Libby Porter, good morning to all of you. We're so glad that you're here with us. Um, so a, a couple more announcements of, of what we have going on during the week. Um, of course, every day at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, we have our prayer service, um, uh, and, and we will read scripture, we will pray together, uh, we will um, just spend time with one another, we'll fellowship, we'll do all kinds of things. So please come check us out every uh, weekday at 10 o'clock in the morning, right here on Facebook Live. Um, and then we're also doing um, our Bible study, uh, it's for anybody, all ages. Um, we're studying the book of Amos, and that happens at 6 o'clock on Wednesday evenings. Um, and so if you're interested in joining, please reach out to me or to Larry, and we'd be more than happy to send you the information so you can log in. We, we have Bible study through video chat through Microsoft Teams. So um, we'd love to see you there. Um, and then, of course, one more thing, if you see the lovely table behind me, we are celebrating communion this morning because it is the first of the month, um, which means that... Um, if you'd like to, uh, during these songs that we're about to sing, or um, during the offering time, or preferably not during the sermon, but then if you have to, um, I want you to go uh, get your elements together. Uh, and that can be just a normal piece of bread. If you don't have bread, it could be a cracker. It could be a chip. It could be anything. Uh, the, the, the power of the sacrament of communion was that the disciples used and Jesus used. Totally normal things that were just on their table that night. Um, so go get some juice, some tea, some whatever you need. And uh, um, uh, we will, after the message, we will transition into a time of communion where we will, I will bless the elements from here and we will all partake at roughly the same time. Um, I see Tommy Thompson's here. Good morning, Pastor. Miss Marcine's here as always. Good morning, Anita. Good morning, Julie. Hello. Frank Ward, good morning, Reverend. Good to see you. Um, please continue to uh, let me know that you're here when you come in. Uh, but also, please, uh, uh, your prayer requests. Throw any prayer requests in. Elena's here. Joe Moody's here. Let's see. Uh, Libby's asking for prayer for uh, Jeff Kitchens. Uh, is this a, a friend of yours, a family member of yours, Libby? Um, we will definitely add um, Jeff's family to our prayer list. Um, absolutely. You're getting lots of compliments, Mama Jan. People are pouring in these comments, loving on you. Betty Puckett says the music was glorious. Yes. Beth said, Mama Jan, thanks for being at church and playing. She says she misses you all very much, and uh, I'm sure they miss and love you too. Uh, let's see. Thelma Tate is here. Good morning, Miss Thelma. Nancy Smith is here. Good morning. Uh, Libby says uh, Jeff is a family friend. Um, so, yes, we will definitely put him on our prayer list and his family. Um, so, yeah, bring, bring on your uh, prayer requests. We'd love to take them and add them. Um, uh, anytime throughout the service, please uh, go ahead and throw that in there. Um, and I'll get to it when I can. I hope I'll be able to. Um, anyway, for now. Uh, let's transition into a time of worship. Uh, and I'm going to begin 
by reading a psalm, and that will serve as our call to worship. And of course, I didn't um, mark my spot that I needed to. Uh, but our call to worship this morning will be the 23rd psalm. If you have your Bible, anytime throughout the worship service uh, for the scripture later on, I, I encourage you to turn along with me so you can read and listen. Um, but let's listen now to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, you have given us yet another beautiful day where we can discover your mercies more and more. We are thankful for this time together. And we are thankful that we can still be united in your love, even when we must be separate. God, let your spirit fall fresh in this place and in the places that we are watching from. Help us to be open to your radical message and help us to be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, be with us in this time. And keep us safe. Until we meet again. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trust me, the irony is not lost on me when I ask you to stand as I sit. But I want to invite you to stand up wherever you are at home. Because we're going to do some singing. Let's see, Miss Evelyn Shackelford is here. Miss Mayor. Tanya Victor, Tanya and Grace are here. Hope you both are doing well. Let's see if I can balance everything that I need to on this music stand. Very degrees of success. All right, friends, our first song this morning is uh, Your Love Changes Everything. Um, let's see. Larry, we're making sure that the guitar's coming through. Did I turn it up for good? All right. Lord, you spoke those words You spoke so tenderly Now I choose to believe You love me, you love me, you love me Lord, you spoke those words Spoke so tenderly. Now I choose to believe you love me, you love me, you love me. You're taking me by the hand again, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything, your love changes everything. Taking me by the hand again, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. I 
will choose to receive. You love me, you love me, you love me. Taking me by the hand again, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. Taking me by the hand again, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. Oh, you never fail. When I look at you, you never fail. And I trust in you. You never let go. You never let go of me. You never let go. You never fail. When I look at you, you never fail. And I trust in you. You never let go. You never let go of me. You never let go. You're taking me by the hand. changes everything. Your love changes everything. You're taking me by the hand again. Giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. You're taking me by the hand again. Giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. Taking me by the hand again, giving me strength to dance again. Your love changes everything. Your love changes everything. Lord, you spoke those words. You spoke so tenderly. Now I choose to believe you love me, you love me, you love me. Amen. All right. Now we've got one more we're going to do. This one is, Lord, I need you. So please uh, remain standing. So we can uh, sing nice and loud. Even though I can't hear you, I will know if you're singing or not. Your pastor always knows. All right. Let's see. Stacy's here. Good morning. Jeremy's here. Good morning. Glad y'all could join us. Please join us for uh, singing this song, Lord, I need you.
I cannot stand, I will fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Confessing your sins to God, and then uh, the prayer will continue, and we will uh, confess and be assured of God's grace and God's forgiveness. So, uh, Sarah and Lauren, take it away. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the desires of our own hearts. We have rebelled against your holy laws. We left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us as we silently confess. Restore those who repent according to your promises declared to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful God, for his sake that we may live a holy, just, and humble life for the glory of your holy name. Our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. Beloved people of God, believe the good news. Through the, through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> Love y'all! Let us pray. Almighty and merciful. Amen. Thank y'all so much for helping me out with that. Um, at this time, we will now prepare to affirm our faith together by uh, reading the Apostles' Creed. And I want to remind you that after this affirmation of faith will be our opportunity for the Josiah box. So please uh, get ready to share your joys and your excitements in the comments with us so we can read them and ring the bell and all celebrate together. Uh, but right now, uh, the affirmation of faith should appear on your screen. So let us affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you so much, and friends, we have confessed our sins, we have been forgiven, and we have united ourselves through our common faith in Jesus Christ. So friends, let us now pass the peace of Jesus to one another that passes all understanding. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Go ahead and uh, share signs of peace and love and reconciliation with all of those around you. Um, hopefully you're quarantine buddies so you can actually touch and hug. We can't do this here, but that's okay. Peace to all of you. All right, y'all, it's time. Go ahead and put down in the comments what you are so excited to share with us, what joys, what celebrations you have that we can all rejoice together. And I believe we have at least one, if not a couple, uh, people here in the sanctuary who want to kick us off. So, uh, Charlie? Adrian says she also has Florida State and Ole Miss, too. Let me know when you get some Memphis masks, okay? <laughs> We're going to bring some Ole Miss up in here. Come on now. Oh. <laughs> Carol Gaines Colbert says, beautiful, Mimi. Aww. So much love. What else? What else should we celebrate? What are exciting things are going on in your lives right now? Beth says she is still thankful that all her family are still doing okay. Amen to that, and that's worth a ring of a bell. What else? Keep those comments coming. And I'm going to take a minute to take a sip of my water, so I'll be right back. I better come back to lots of Josiah boxes, okay? Come on.
people doing worship in that building this morning? Wow! Seven Colbreth relatives are here, so uh, thank y'all for being here. Let's see. Trish Irby says she finished her uh, specialization part of her master's degree wow. in education technology, and she will be finished with her entire degree in December of this year. Congratulations. <laughs> Tanya Victor says she's thankful uh, for being an essential worker and still being able to work and still being healthy. Amen for that. Lynn says uh, her niece Caroline was inducted into the Spanish Honor Society and is a graduating senior this year. Uh, congratulations, Caroline. Uh, if you have any more celebrations, keep them coming. We're going to move on um, to the next part of our service. But um, throughout this whole service, just keep, keep them coming. If you remember one or if somebody tells you one, or if you share somebody else's, as long as it's okay with them. Please do. Um, but we want to see all the things that we can rejoice together in this time. Um, so we're going to move on now to our offering time. And if you remember, um, we have been having to collect our offerings um, through the mail because we're not meeting together in person. And, uh, of course, your continued giving, your tithes and your offerings are so important to this church's ability to continue to do ministry. Right? That's why we are a church. Not so we can come and worship together and hug and love on each other. That's all good, but that's not why we're here. We're here so we can do work that God has called us to do, so we can minister, so we can serve, so we can love, so we can spread the good news. And uh, with your continued gifts, your continued love and support, we're able to still do that even though we have to be long distance. Um, so at this time, we are going to have a beautiful song uh, from... Uh, Charlie and Beth with Mama Jan playing. So while this song is playing, I want you to go grab an envelope, go get your offering ready, uh, put it in there, seal it all up so you can put it in the mail first thing tomorrow. Uh, this will be our time where we can do that uh, together so that we can uh, remember, so that we can keep each other accountable, so that we can continue our gifts to God even in these strange times. So friends, uh, let's now prepare our tithes and our offerings. Um, 
was uh, the first of May, a uh, Friday. So happy birthday, Caroline. That's a couple of weeks ago. Miss Kelly or Mr. Kelly? Miss Kelly. Oh, Miss Kelly. On the 5th. The 5th. Miss Kelly's birthday is uh, on the 5th, so happy birthday, Miss Kelly. I hope you are watching and uh, enjoying lots of great baby loving. Um, let's see. And then we have a couple more prayer requests, so thank you for adding those. Um, from Tanya, a co-worker of hers lost a baby on Friday. Uh, we're so sorry. That is just absolutely heart-wrenching um, during childbirth. Uh, and then Lynn uh, has a friend who um, has a, uh, or who got, had a biopsy for cancer, uh, and it came back negative. So we're so excited for that. That's wonderful. Um, keep your prayer requests, keep your joys coming. Um, and now we're going to move on. We're going to sing another song before we get into our scripture and our sermon. This is He Keeps Me Singing. So please uh, stand and sing. <laughs> whisper sweet and low fear not I am with thee peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus Jesus sweetest name I know <laughs> fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go my life was wrecked by sin and strife. This part filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. of his grace resting neath his sheltering wing always looking on his smiling face that is why I shout and sing Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I Sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yet yeah, in certain women... Also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up at the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And that's it. Thank you. Hi, church. Today I will be reading some scripture. Thank you so much. Friends, let's pray. God, through the gift of your holy scriptures, we give you thanks. We pray in this moment that through the reading of your word, through the proclaiming of your word, we would be changed. We pray that we would have our eyes open as Cleopas and his friend did on the road centuries ago. Be with us at this time. Help us to be connected through the power of your spirit. Help us to learn and grow and be transformed. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. The first time I felt it, I was uh, 15. And I probably won't have to tell you where I was. I was at, I was at camp, CCW, you should have known it by now. That summer for camp, the staff, some of my favorite people in the world have planned a brilliant theme where each night of worship functioned in a different worship style. So we had a good old backwoods stump preaching bluegrass band playing service that Jamie Adams led. We had a Celtic-style service with hymns and responsive liturgy that Missy Rose led. And one night, we had a full-on revival. Worship uh, was in the pavilion at CCW. It moved around each night to match the, the style of the service. This was in the pavilion. And Mitch Bolton and Daniel Barkley co-preached our revival service. And there was some good old shouting and hollering going as on, going on as they hammered into our heads the grace of God through the story of the prodigal son. And if you know Mitch or Daniel, you know that I'm not playing. In addition to the preaching, 
uh, they made a small choir out of the campers, just a, a group of, of kids who wanted to sing, maybe 10 or 15, uh, and Corey Williams directed them and played his guitar to back them up. I can't tell you what it was. Maybe it was uh, the fact that they played my favorite song that night. Uh, or maybe it was uh, the fact that Jesus' parable of the prodigal son has always been one of my favorites. Or, or maybe it was that dumb, cheesy look on Corey's face as he smiled and as he and the choir hit that last big note while he's strumming that guitar. There was an energy in that place, uh, uh, an energy that in retrospect I, I knew was there almost immediately. As soon as worship began, I knew that there was I couldn't quite put my finger on, but it wasn't until the choir hit that last note that I broke down. It just grew and grew uncontrollably. It was like, it was like, uh, it was like that time at the Montgomery Bell State Park Young Adult Retreat that we have with our denomination. It had been a hard year for me. I guess I just didn't realize how hard of a year it had been for me. A couple of my friends from college had died. My family was going through some things, and I guess I hadn't fully dealt with all of that grief. Anyway, so we come to the small chapel in Montgomery Bell. It's small enough that we filled the whole room with about 60 of us. And maybe it was the energy from earlier in the weekend or Maybe it was the tone and the environment set by Nathan Wheeler, who directed and led the retreat. Um, but for some reason, as soon as the worship service started, I immediately broke down and had to fight back tears. I don't know if you've ever experienced something like that, but I was I was leading worship, and it was it was really kind of funny. It was like you can't like we're standing up there and we're like, all right, everybody good, ready, here we go. <coughs> I mean, it was like instant, like as soon as we started, the air changed. Something was different in that place with us. I knew there was a different energy there, and sure enough, it didn't take long for me to break down during that service. I wrestled with a lot, and I shouted God's praises, along with 59 or so of my closest friends, for an hour after worship had already ended. I wasn't expecting it, and, and I can't fully explain it even now. It, it was like, it was like, uh, it was like what I imagine our friends along the road to Emmaus were feeling. I bet they didn't know what happened either. And they were believers. That's why they were in Jerusalem, because they left their homes and their families and followed Jesus all the way to J Jerusalem. These two disciples sat with him in the temple as he taught. They listened to his teachings about the kingdom of God. These two disciples, like many more than just the twelve, there were many, many disciples who followed Jesus around. They left all that they had behind and risked their lives to follow this stranger named Jesus. And yet, they didn't even really know what was happening either. After all, all they knew was this inspirational man, this great teacher who they had followed for a while now was dead. They risked everything. And then he failed. He would not be able to institute his kingdom, to overthrow Caesar's kingdom after all. He would not save God's people after all. They gave it a good run. But now that he's dead, that's kind of the whole point of all this, right? It's Jesus. I guess that means the bad guys won. So there's nothing left to do but go home. These two disciples, Cleopas and his unnamed friend, are traveling from Jerusalem back to Emmaus when a stranger joins them on the road. Probably not terribly uncommon. Uh, for that to have happened, especially during Passover, when, when people are coming and going to Jerusalem for the celebrations. This is just after the Passover is over. However, this stranger must have just recently emerged from under his rock because he has no clue what Cleopas and his friend are talking about. He doesn't know about the mighty prophet Jesus who came from Nazareth and, and who cured the sick 
and, and healed the blind and stood up to the powerful just to be killed on the cross like so many others. Just like all the rest of them who stand up to the powerful in Rome. So that's why we're going home, because it's over now. The stranger begins to just lay into them about how wrong they are, which I imagine creates a pretty humorous scene along this road to Emmaus. These two disciples of Jesus who are friends getting shouted at by the stranger who is actually secretly Jesus himself the whole time. This whole passage is dripping with dramatic irony, where we, the audience, understand who Jesus is before the characters do in the story. We're like, how can you not see it? That's him. And when really we only know it because Luke told us. Yet the disciples don't recognize their rabbi. Not yet at least, not through the shouting, not through the yelling, not even through the interpreting of the scriptures that Jesus does for them. Jesus remains hidden. The disciples reach their destination about seven miles from Jerusalem. And this stranger bids farewell off to continue on down the road into the night. However, Cleopas and his friend do exactly what good first century Middle Easterners do. They offer hospitality. They invite this stranger to stay the night with them because it's getting so late. You might as well stay with us and leave again in the morning. They extend hospitality. They offer themselves and their space to another, to a stranger. They make room for a stranger. They share a meal, and as the stranger breaks the bread, their eyes are open, and they see the Messiah in their midst, their Jesus, their friend, their mentor, their Savior, alive again and sitting at their dinner table. Only for a moment. As in a moment he vanishes, after the disciples recover, they realize something about their time with this stranger. They realize that they knew something was very different about this moment from the very beginning. Way back on the road, they felt something different about this encounter. They just couldn't put a finger on it. It was like it was it was like it was like our hearts were burning within us. How did we not notice that then? Luke is not the only evangelist to includes a story like this in this gospel. These stories are called non-recognition stories. And I think the fascinating question about non-recognition stories is, what is the moment when the disciples do recognize? Because often that's the most telling thing. What is it that reveals Jesus to them? I think that's maybe the most important question of a non-recognition story. As the gospel writer can tell us so much about Jesus, but also about ourselves through the way Jesus reveals himself to the disciples. In John's gospel, a very famous non-recognition story, Mary sits and weeps outside the tomb until the gardener appears. Even though we know it's not the gardener, but she thinks that her best friend Jesus is dead and gone. She doesn't realize who he is, and so she just starts talking to this gardener. Earlier in the gospel, Jesus tells us that the sheep of the good shepherd know the voice of the shepherd, and the shepherd calls them by name. So when Jesus calls Mary by her name, Mary, she immediately recognizes her friend. That's when her eyes are open and she sees Jesus. Here in Luke's gospel, the moment of recognition is just as important. So when is it that the disciples actually finally recognize Jesus? When they see him? No. They first said it, saw him on the road and walked a whole journey with him. When they remember all that had happened in Jerusalem and they tell the story? No. Was it when Jesus explains the scriptures to them? No. Their recognition did not occur until Jesus broke the bread for them and gave it to them. When they sat down at the table with their guest, who they had so graciously and hospitably welcomed into their home. The language that Luke uses here is meant to very intentionally echo the language of the Last Supper, the Eucharist meal that the disciples shared with one another just before Jesus died. So that means that 
we can gather from the story that Jesus was revealed to the disciples through the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the meal. Why? Why is that so important for Luke? What is so important about that moment? And how does that moment reach us today? For Luke, the table is maybe the most important setting of his entire gospel. After all, you only eat with people who you love and trust enough to welcome into your home and to your table, which was why it was such a big deal that Jesus often ate with tax collectors and sinners. Who you ate with was a social statement reflecting who was good enough to spend time with you and who wasn't. It wasn't just about food. It was about your social standing in the world. But also on a more basic, fundamental level, the table is where the life-sustaining process takes place, right? We have to eat food to live. It's really an incredibly intimate, vulnerable thing to say to another person, I want to engage in the process of elongating my life with you, while you elongate your life with me. You know what I think about when I think about this passage? I can't help thinking of uh, a story in Matthew's Gospel. The passage in chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus tells a parable about the last days. Where the Messiah will judge and divide all of humanity into the sheep and the goats. The sheep are the ones who took care of Jesus when he was sick. Who fed Jesus when he was hungry. They clothed Jesus when he was naked. They visited Jesus when he was in prison. While the goats were the ones who ignored Jesus, when he was sick, hungry, naked, or in prison. But here's the catch to Matthew's parable. Neither the sheep nor the goats knew that they were dealing with Jesus. The sheep didn't know they were serving Jesus, and the goats didn't know they were ignoring Jesus. The sheep just thought they were doing the right thing just because this person needs help. This person is poor, and I can offer help to them. And the goats were ignoring the needy. Because they weren't important enough to deserve their help. I'm sure they would have helped Jesus if they knew that it was Jesus. What we have in our story in Luke is a couple of disciples who reach out to help a stranger without knowing that he is Jesus. This is Matthew 25 in action. They simply opened themselves without knowing that Jesus was there. And they saw the resurrected Christ because of it. And the best part is, in retrospect, they knew all along because their hearts were burning within them. It was like a 15-year-old Paul sitting in the pavilion at CCW with tears in his eyes because he didn't know what to do. Or like a 25-year-old Paul standing in the chapel at Montgomery Bell, shaking, trying to get the words that he wanted to say out. I guess what I'm trying to say is my heart was burning within me each of those times and so many other times as well. It's like the prophet Jeremiah proclaimed. It was like fire shut up in my bones. This burning sensation, this sensation of a revealed and resurrected Messiah only has one effect on a person. After this meal where they encountered Jesus, Cleopas and his friend did what? They ran the seven miles back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. The only thing you can do when your heart burns in the presence of Jesus is let the fire spread. I don't know where you are right now. Emotionally, spiritually, physically even. But if you're like me, you feel something in you that you can't contain and you can't control in this time of quarantine. You feel a burning sensation that you might realize has actually been present with you for a long time. That's because Jesus was walking with you and you didn't even know it. Friends, here in a moment, we will shake the scales from our eyes. Here at this table, I want to invite you to let down your guard, to allow yourself to encounter a stranger, because through the hospitality of serving a stranger in need, the disciples saw Jesus. And through the breaking of the bread, Jesus will be made known to us as well as Jesus' disciples today. 
I don't know what fire is burning within me, but I know that that fire is dying to spread. So let us set the table. Let us find a savior. Let us watch the fire spread. How's my mic? Am I on? Oh, yeah. Friends, this table does not belong to me. It doesn't belong to First CP Church. It doesn't belong to Larry or Kayla or Tree or Charlie or Jan. It belongs to God. And that means that at this table, all people are welcome. Whether you are a member of First CP Church or you're a guest, a visitor watching along, I want you to be encouraged that you are welcome at this table too. So find your elements, get your bread, get your juice ready, and we're about to celebrate the sacrament together. Because in God's kingdom, at God's table, whosoever will may come. Friends, the night that Jesus was arrested, he and his closest friends, the disciples, gathered together for a meal. And during the meal, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, all of you. And every time you do, remember me. In the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and said, Friends, this is the cup of the new covenant, shed for the forgiveness of sins, sealed in my blood. Take and drink, all of you, and every time you do, remember me. That every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection. Until he comes again. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, you meet us in the most unlikely of places. On the road as we are leaving to go back home in an empty sanctuary in our living rooms as we watch on a phone or a computer or a TV. God, as you made yourself present to the disciples through the breaking of the bread, make yourself present to us today. Help us to be open and vulnerable and ready for you to come into our homes and come into our lives so that we can experience your grace, your forgiveness, your love, so that fire that is burning within us can spread be with us in this time through the power of your Holy Spirit that stretches wide and far from east to west. Bless these elements wherever they may be. Bless this bread and this cup. Turn these common, ordinary elements into something extraordinary for your purposes. And through our encounter with them, help us to see you and help us to be turned to your extraordinary instruments, your vessels here in this world. God, send us out into your world to be the light in the darkness, to keep us safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as you can see, this is uh, going to be a very different form of communion. Um, in a moment, I'm going to invite you and whoever you're with in your um, home to take your bread, drink your juice. But we don't all have to do that at the same time. Mama Jane is going to play a wonderfully beautiful piano piece. Um, so I want you to take this time to reflect, to pray, to talk to God. And whenever you're ready, you and your 
can we can consume your elements together. Now, for those of us here, um, we have pre-poured and pre-cut, pre-poured juice and pre-cut bread, so I won't be handling anything that anyone else is eating. So all of you, just come on up and grab a piece of bread and grab a cup. But here's the other thing I want you to do. During this song, as Mama Jan plays, I want you to listen to the fire that is burning in your heart, especially if you realize that that fire has been burning for a long time. And after you eat your bread and drink your cup, I want you to respond to that fire in your heart. Whether that means you want to rededicate your life, I want you to put that in the comments. If that means you want to make a decision for the first time, I want you to put that in the comments and let us know. If that means you want to covenant with your family, with your siblings, with your parents, to love them better than you ever have before because that fire has been burning in you for a long time, I want you to put that in the comments so that we can all see, we can celebrate, and we can keep each other accountable. That's what the body of Christ is. So friends, I want you to take your communion, to pray, and to respond however the Holy Spirit is calling you to respond. And please let us know. Put that down there in the comments so we can pray for you, so we can pray with you, so we can rejoice with you. So friends, all is now made. I invite you to take your meal. Friends, will you pray with me? Almighty God, your grace knows no ends. We're so thankful that you give us the power and the authority to come to you. 
the ability to take this fire that burns within us and spread it far and wide. God, we pray that this fire will be spread even as we as a people must remain separate. We know that your spirit is not limited by distance, but that you can make all things possible, even in the wilderness. God, help us to be transformed by our encounter with you today. Help us to know that you are still present with us. And help us to take the message of the resurrected Jesus Christ to the whole world. God, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to stand up at home uh, as we sing our final closing hymn together. Guide me, O oh, thou great. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, 
Give to all those in need. Show only love and compassion to all people. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Now and forevermore.